And it sounds like a deer, man, right? Sounds great. Welcome to the Back to Life series at B Tough. Join us as we go behind the scenes and check out some of the best hot rod fabrication in Bakersfield at HS Body Works. This is outrageous what I'm about to show you. Now we're here with Clayton and Mark, right? And Mark, you helped build this thing? Correct. Clayton, you are the owner of Kern Machinery here in Bakersfield, California, right? Well, yeah, I've got my brothers. Yes, our family. It's a family deal. Okay, cool. I'm not gonna get too much, I'm just gonna give them a little teaser here, right? There we go. And why did you pick 1969 GMC? 1969 was the year my parents got into the John Deere business. And so it was a celebration of, of that. Right. What's special about this truck is that it has a John Deere motor in it, right? right. Now, is it a real John Deere? It's 100% John Deere motor, like you could order it like crate style or whatever from the factory? Yes. Okay, so tell us about it. How'd you come up with that? Or, Well, we also own an uh, engine distributor next door. Okay. So the Clayton came to me one day and said, hey, I want to put a John Deere engine in a truck. We didn't even have the truck at the time. And he goes, do you want to do it? And I said, yeah, we'll talk about it when the time comes. Then this truck shows up. So it was a 69 four-speed with a 350. Somebody did a sort of cleanup on it. I wouldn't call it a restoration. They put a cheap paint job on it. And uh, so we looked at it. And then we were debating on six-cylinder, four-cylinder. And uh, he elected to go four-cylinder. And uh, then from there, I just tore into it. Yeah, wow. Now, what was the hardest part, would you think, on this thing, on this build? Is there anything that you didn't expect or was it pretty much what you thought it was gonna be? You know, I built a lot of trucks and rails and things over the years, and that's the number one question I always get asked. Everything's hard if you don't know what you're doing. It's just hard. Right. I mean, in this one, you're stuffing a huge diesel, even though it's a four cylinder, obviously into a tiny package that is incredible and then doing it nicely and neatly and making it look oem uh -huh. but we had to take so we first got the truck and pulled the front clip everything off it tore it all apart and kind of went through and fixed all the things we wanted to fix and then i had a blank slate we had the whole front end i got the engine was donated by his brother who owns the uh engine distributor it's the most powerful four cylinder that Deere makes. So we got the whole engine package, and then he wanted the Allison, and we were flipping between the five speed and the six speed. So then I had the automatic people we deal with built us a hybrid. It's basically a 1000 case with 2000 internals in it, and it's a six speed. Wow. And then we had to source out a controller because it uses electronic controls and integrate that into our control system because this is an electronically controlled diesel. You're not going to take this to the dealership to go get worked on, right? I don't we think are they're... the dealership. Well, I mean, you guys are, but you couldn't take it to the automotive dealer. Like, they wouldn't even know what to do with it, right? I mean... I'm probably the only one that knows how to work on it other than the guy that helped me the most. He was one of my lead techs. He's since retired. But I would envision what I wanted, and then I don't have the time to dedicate it. However, I did dedicate one Saturday for a year. Okay. Every set, you know, once a month, every Saturday, we would work on it exclusively. Yeah. How, how does how would it compare driving compared to like a Duramax when you talk about running a tractor engine compared to like a standard diesel engine you'd find you find in it? You don't really notice a difference. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. Amazing. I mean, other than, you know, it's a four cylinder, not an eight. Right. They rev higher. This doesn't. Yeah. You're working in a lower, you're working more down in a Cummins uh, RPM range. Okay. With yeah. this. And you switched the gears on it, of course. No, it came with four tens. It did. It came with four tens. Okay. Man, that is amazing. Now, does it get too hot under the hood? I know you got some heat no. wrap here. It doesn't? No, okay. That was strictly precautionary. All right. I've made no changes to this truck since I designed it and put it together. Right. This is was the finished product and haven't had to change anything. All right. Now, you know one thing that's interesting because you can't go order engine mounts for a John Deere tractor into a truck, right? Do they even, they don't, that doesn't even exist. 
No. Right? So you got to make that, right? So you're fabricating. So There's a lot more fabric. So all this is empty. The whole front end of the truck is gone. All that's there is a frame rail. You take the engine, set it in. I figure out where I want it to go, measure, design. We have Victory Circle that's down the road from us. It has a CNC and a plasma cutter. So I would draw up what I wanted, have them cut the parts out of AR, and then when I got them back, I would do, I did all the welding. Okay, so you, you fabricated it all together once you got the pieces cut. Right, yeah. right. Designed right. it and then did and that. that. And that goes with the underneath too, right? Oh, all the undercarriage. So originally, obviously, the transfer case was attached to the old four-speed. We went with a whole different transfer case. We went with the 203. So then I had to source a guy in Canada that had a, a divorce unit for the front of it so we could divorce it. And then I built all the brackets to okay. suspend the tranny, suspend the transfer case. And the engine's mounted on four pedestals. The transmission's mounted and the transfer case has its own carrier. Right. I gotta ask it. Does John Deere have a patented green? Is that a, is that a color or is that? It's not a patented, but there is definitely a John Deere green and John okay. Deere yellow. Yeah. So this when... is not it. This okay. Is, this, yeah. is... this is not it. Okay. Yeah. In fact, we didn't even do. I did a few things to the interior. I put a carpet in it, but it came with fairly new panels. It came with the seat cover, which I kind of like the contrast in the different greens. It looks original. I mean, it looks like it's not original. It's re. Right. It's, it's redone, but it thought. looks like. It's Terry Crack. Yeah, yeah, yes, it yeah. is. They got the right one for, for that period. Right. Uh, we didn't change anything on the dash or the steering. Or... Yeah, it had its seatbelts? No, it had the seatbelts. It did. It 69 had, it just, had seatbelts? It just has lap On belts. trucks? All right. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it looks cool, man. I like it. it. You didn't go too far with it, but I see there's a, a, a couple little modern things thrown in there. Right there in the center, drop mm -hmm. down under the climate control. Okay. So right here, the screen you see, that's our John Deere interface. So we can see digitally all the readings on the engine, codes, all that kind of, and over there is the Allison shifter. Whoa. And uh, overdrive switches. So everything we pretty much added is all contained in that one panel yeah. that's right there. I like that. I like this panel, man, that's cool. Wow. And all the factory gauges function. So if you looked at the dash of it, you wouldn't know. Yeah. You have cruise control in it? Cruise. This might be one of the only 1969 trucks with cruise control no, in it. We huh? wanted that special. We did not put it together with that. I didn't feel the need for it. When, <laughs> I, when I first finished it, I took it on its maiden voyage down to San Diego to my house. And I didn't see the need, but he likes it. So. Now, who put that? Who wanted the air conditioning? They had it, him, of course. He's all about creature comforts. But it had air, but it wasn't functioning. Okay. And that's why earlier I was saying I had to modify it to modern. So I just cut it up and made it myself. And yeah. Amazing. We needed the cruise control as the engine would go in and out. Yeah. It, it, it was hard to keep a steady miles per hour. And I asked for cruise control. Mark said, well, we can do it this way. Yeah. And, now, he, and he did it. And it's got so much torque that it took the original Dana 60 axles and twisted them in half. Whoa. Were you retesting it or something? So, yeah, we were doing some testing. <laughs> now, so, you, we had Dutchman make us some uh, good alloy ones. Have you talked to John Deere? Do they know you did this right here? Some do. Are they? I mean, I, I mean, maybe you're doing something here. Are you maybe get the automotive industry? Maybe right? Offer some John Deere engines? No, not gonna do it. Nah. Yeah. Right. All right. I'm gonna come back around here to the back. Now, of course, the patented thing. How long has this logo been with John Deere? It, it has to be a long time. I remember this even as a kid. Right. Nothing runs like a deer. Right. Has that been there for a long time in the John Deere company? seven years or something like wow. that. Wow. So it's, uh, I don't know that that's been around that long, but yeah, deer is, deer is known for that. Right. Now, have you, have, have any other, like say you have other John Deere dealerships, right? Have they, have they seen this thing? Do they know what you got here? Have they, have they took a look at it? Yeah, they're jealous. I'm going to say, when you open this, it's not fair, we've right? We've had John Deere engineers out here for other functions we've had, and then I catch them all out here <sighs> snooping around and but they don't ask questions, but right. they've heard about it. So they've heard about it, it, so they want to look at it, and then they go look. Yeah. Now, I, you know what? I have to hear it. I've got to hear it start up. Can we do that? Because yeah. it runs, right? No. It doesn't run? Oh, okay. <laughs> I got to hear it, man. It I, doesn't I, run. 
And it sounds like a deer, man, right? Sounds great. Yep. So like going down the highway is pretty quiet. It is. You can, you can have a conversation with the cat, no problem. That's not, noisy That's not that noisy at all. Wow. That's incredible. That's something else. You had to, I would imagine that you had to make, it looks like you had to make the shroud, right? That's all custom made. Everything. The whole thing, right? All, all the, everything you see other than the engine. Yeah. The exhaust, all the intercooler tube, all the cooling system, the radiator. That was a cross flow aluminum, but the fittings all had to be modified. The whole AC system is basically from scratch. So this right here. So it's coming out of the turbo. Okay. Going in, being intercooled, air to air, and then out and up to the intake. Uh, and that's how that would work even on a tractor? That's how the setup would, that, that has the same setup on a yes. tractor? Okay. Yes. In fact, this intercooler comes out of one of our models of tractors. Yeah, I was going to say, like, how much of this stuff, as far as the cooling, is? do you try to get as close as you can to, like, a tractor? You don't. You I don't. just put the biggest intercooler I could fit in it. We have intercooler. We have AC condenser, we have engine oil cooler and tranny cooler. Yeah, you know, a lot of people will not understand that. I mean, I'm looking at this latch and how close and how you had to modify that to get that, you know, that close to all that stuff, right? Okay, well, the engine can only go back so far, right? I mean, you got to push back probably almost as far as you could get it, right? Obviously. Right. And I'm looking up here, that clutch fan is within a quarter inch of the radiator, right? <laughs> and then you have all your stuff up here, you're cooling up here. You don't have very much room to work, right? I mean, you're talking with, you're, you're scrapping for inches here. Well, it's just like a modern vehicle. Yeah. And I didn't want to come into the core support if I didn't have to with the radiator. So we were lucky. I did modify it a little bit. I came forward about a half an inch, but I'm good with the quarter inch. Wow. Clay, when you see all this, were you impressed by some of the workmanship that was going? I mean, do you, I mean, I know for, for someone, a fabricator will look at this and say, wow, whoever did this really knew what they were doing. I mean, to do something like this, but even like as someone that said, okay, go ahead, Mark, go ahead and take over here. What was your impression when he's just wild, wild. This, this is so clean. It is so, it's just precise. It's factory. It's better than factory. This is just, it's an amazing work of art. I will give him credit. I asked him for carte blanche and not to have my hands tied and gave it to him. Green light across the board? Yeah. <laughs> Very good. If I envisioned it and I wanted it, I did it. Yeah. Do you draw any of this up or do you just kind of just I go for it? How much of it is on the fly? How much is pre-planned? Oh, 80% is on the fly. Oh, it is? Oh, yeah. Right. Like all the stuff you're talking about here, I just tackle one problem at a time. We're going to do this. We're going to do this. We're going to do this. And, you know, in here where you're talking about laying out all the coolers, making all the brackets, making everything fit. Incredible. The stuff that I have to draw up and do all that is the stuff we're having to outsource. Now, you know what's cool, Clayton? I want to talk a little bit too, because, you know, you're, you're kind of using this a little bit to entice a program that you're trying to get involved with, right? And right. explain that to us a little bit. We're involved, we've been involved for probably about 10 years with a uh, ag tech program that's sponsored by John Deere up at Walla Walla Washington Junior College. And uh, we are uh, helping grow our own technicians by taking them through a 21 month program that's sponsored by Deere. And they, will, they go there for three months, they come here for three months and it's back and forth. And when they finish that program, According to Deere, they are certified in hydraulics, electrical, and diesel. So it's a very good starting point when they come to us. They're by no means experienced enough, but it's a leg up on uh, hiring young technicians. Uh, we, don't, we don't have mechanics. We have technicians, and uh, they're concentrated in, in electrical the way our tractors are going, uh, as long as and the diesel is still there, and, and you know, we're totally hydraulics too. So. It's a program that we just wanted to show high school folks that, uh, yeah, we work on tractors, but we have a little fun too. And uh, we brag on 
and Mark and Brian who put this together on, on their thought path and being able to do it. So it's, it's, a, it's a combination of things and celebration of our history and a promotion of the future. Yeah, you know, I'm gonna imagine that you are probably grouped in with a, a lot of industrial companies around this area, around the country, that are having a hard time finding technicians or people, right? Because we're sending a lot of kids and we're promoting through the high school systems and even into junior high, we're saying, you know, set you up for college, right? And they're funneling all these kids into college and doesn't leave a lot of room for kids that want to work in this kind of Correct. industry, right? Yeah. The, the, the VOAG things, the vocational uh, classes uh, have, we've lost, we had lost some of those. They're starting to come back, but we have a real struggle on finding the right people to come into the business with us. Yeah. So this, the the uh, ag tech program sponsored by Deer is a good one. We help with, with their funding and we will pay them back over time uh, if they prove to be a success story. Yeah. Well, I will tell you this, that I have seen a lot of trucks and I've seen a lot of cars come out of the H&S Body Works. And this one is one for the books here. Uh, I, I think you have definitely the most unique truck in town. It's kind of a hidden gem. I don't think very many people even know it's here, but here it is, man, right in Bakersfield, California. A John Deere GMC 2500 with a John Deere motor. There you go, man. Congratulations on that, guys. Very cool.